Konnichiwa, everybody, and welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today, we are traveling to Tokyo, Japan for the very first time. Come with us on our travel day. We'll grab some breakfast at the Delta Lounge before boarding our plane for the 12 hour flight. We'll give you a tour of our premium select seats and all the amenities that come with them. Is it worth the extra cost? And once we land in Japan, we'll give you a tour of our tiny hotel room, which not only has a killer view, but a famous kaiju monster crashing through the building itself. We'll walk around Shinjuku at night and get our first encounter with a Japanese vending machine and discover melon soda. Our lives will never be the same again. Come with us on this adventure. Good morning. It is time to go to Japan. I'm like excited, I'm nervous, I have like anxiety about flying, but I'm also like excited to be flying because we're like have cool seats. I don't know, I'm like a ball of emotions and I just want to get there already. But half the fun is the travel day, so let's get going. Is half the fun the travel day? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we're gonna make it fun because we're making a video. We're gonna show you how fun it is, right? I don't know. We usually like living the carry-on life, which limits us to like one roller bag, one backpack for every trip. Makes you more self-sufficient, you know, overpack, and also you don't have to rely on checking your bags and picking it up. But this time we're going to Japan, we're going for two weeks. So we need to check a big bag, also a big bag, because kids are gonna buy a ton of souvenirs. So we're basically checking like an empty bag just so I can fill it with stuff to bring home. <laughs> we travel a lot, but we've never traveled to Japan and it's been something that like we've tried to book a few times. Every single time it's like too overwhelming. We've done step one, we've checked our bag, we've done step two, we've gone through security. What's step three? The Delta Lounge? Yeah. We like got here ridiculously early, so we have time to go to the lounge, and I'm so excited. All right, we made it inside the Delta Sky Club. We found a table. Now let's go get our breakfast. We got Beyond Breakfast Sausage, Sea Salt Roasted Potatoes, Pork Sausage Patties, Mushroom Florentine Egg Bites. Of course, they have a bunch of pastries because it is in the morning. Dairy-free and Greek yogurt. They have a whole charcuterie set up. Boiled eggs, melon salad. And of course, they got a bagel cream cheese toaster set up. I like to be healthy. I've never seen this before, but they actually had a make your own omelet station. So I got myself a ham and cheese omelet. And they also had some apple cider. So, tis the season. <laughs> I went a little more basic than Peter. I just got myself some scrambled eggs, some potatoes, and a bunch of strawberries. And of course, the most important meal of the day, a nice iced coffee. I normally don't drink coffee or eat before flying because I get like weird stomach issues, but we have such a long flight that I'm indulging today. Another thing I like about this Delta Sky Lounge is they have these art installations all throughout. So there's this whole wall right here by artist Alex Gross, all these pop culture superhero characters. It's pretty cool. We're sitting inside, but there is this whole outdoor area overlooking the tarmac that's actually kind of beautiful and nice to sit out there. I also noticed there's a second buffet where they were doing breakfast tacos. Oh my gosh. I wish I knew that before I got my <laughs> omelet, but also free alcohol, so I got myself a pineapple mimosa. Ooh, pineapple. Everything tastes better when it's free. The way we get in here is we have this American Express card that gets you free Delta lounge access. I think that's changing next year, so it's not something I can recommend at this point, but we make good use of it because it's better <laughs> sitting here than sitting at the gate. And I got a Bloody Mary. It's perfect. Oh, good. Oh, that's got some flavors in there that I wasn't expecting. I thought it was just going to be basic, but very good. That'll wake you up for sure. Are you nervous? Yeah. I'm trying not to think about it, though. I feel better now that we, like, got to sit down, get, like, some food in us. But I still am a little bit nervous. I think it's not going to hit me until we get there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to believe it until I see it. So we're flying out of LAX, which usually is kind of crusty and dusty. But we are flying out of Terminal 3, which is the new Delta Terminal. 
which is actually fantastic. They have like new restaurants. There's even this like convenience store that you can literally just pick things up and walk out with them and it charges your credit card. I just like to pick up some candy for the air. Airheads for the air. Normally I'd grab some soda, but we get free drinks and alcohol and stuff on the plane. We do, but I'm still gonna grab myself a water. And it's just that easy. It's kind of like bad though, because you forget how expensive prices are at airports. You're like, oh, I'll take one of these, I'll take one of these. And then you get a statement for like $40. You're like, what? And then you're like, oh yeah. It feels like stealing. It does. It feels wrong, but we gotta go. Our flight's like literally boarding right now. So we were in Delta Premium Select. It's above Comfort Plus, but not quite Delta One, which is like they're lay flat. And I booked it on points. It's the first time I've ever booked anything on points. I spent 340,000 miles. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but otherwise it would have cost $5,000. This has a few extra inches of leg room, has a dedicated overhead luggage space, has a larger in-flight 13.3 inch widescreen entertainment screen has 50% more seat recline, up to seven inches more wow. reclined than the main cabin. I didn't know that, that's exciting. The seats are wider, there's a USB outlet and 110 volt power outlet, so if we wanna edit on the plane, we can. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you all the swag that we got. Some stuff I was not expecting, like these slippers. You get a pair of Delta slippers. I'm gonna cherish these forever for the rest of my life. And look at this. We get these premium headphones. It says Delta Studio premium headset. Usually they just give you like the crappy headset. Yeah. So this is exciting. I'm gonna watch so many movies. Okay, what do we got in here? These awesome pair of Delta socks. A little lip balm, some fancy lip balm. A toothbrush and toothpaste set. Ooh, oh my gosh. Earplugs and an eye mask. This is like exactly what I need. <laughs> That's so cool. And then we have a personal size pillow. So in this class of seat, we do get fed. And it looks like we're gonna have a choice of chicken parmesan, a lasagna, and beef sukiyaki. And that is accompanied by an appetizer and dessert. Doesn't say what it is. We're sitting here, and some people walked by some Japanese people. And they got so excited to see us. And it made me cry. It was so cute. They were like, Ordinary adventures, and I like shook her hand. Oh my god. Oh, uh, I'm not ready. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh god. And they were wearing like Disney merch and stuff, yeah. so it's cool. They had a lightsaber. For some reason, like, Our also people. they probably came here to yeah. go to Disneyland and build a lightsaber, and we're going there. That's so cool. I'm gonna be amazed if anybody in Japan actually recognizes us in Japan. It happened to us in Hawaii but I feel like usually we only get recognized in the parks. So we've been sitting here on the runway waiting to take off. Seems like 10, 15 minutes. I was wondering why. Turns out the Vice President of the United States is about to take off, and that's why we're in the penalty box. Everybody talks about Air Force One, but no one talks about Air Force Two. We are born here just a few minutes, thanks. I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting them to do every announcement in both English and Japanese, but it totally makes sense. Customs form on the plane. I'm gonna fill this out and say, I declare the kitchen farted. Peter, can you drop it already? <laughs> I have nothing else to declare. I want the whole world knowing. Funny thing here is like, are you gonna bring any vegetables? Are you gonna bring any any gold bullion into? Who brings gold bullion? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> they also gave us a nice cleansing towel. Love it. Oh my god, it smells so good. I can get used to this life. <laughs> it's like the one and only time we're gonna fly like premium. <laughs> we literally just took off and they already came by and gave us a complimentary glass of champagne. And I think it's like lunchtime already because they came and set our table. And I guess this is our appetizer, some little cheese biscuits. Okay, so we're trying to decide what we're gonna eat. The beef one sounds the most interesting because it comes with like Japanese pickles and some other stuff, miso soup. All right, so I ended up getting the lasagna. It actually looks pretty good. I'm not quite sure what 
the side is. It, it almost looks like a potato salad or something. I like how they give you silverware and everything up here. It's like oh. fancy. Dinner is served. One of the great things about Delta Premium is we get free drinks, so I got myself a Jack and Coke. Kitra went more Japanese traditional. Yeah, I was just gonna get like a White Claw, but he was like, oh, we don't have any White Claws. So I was like, okay, I'll have a beer. And then he was like, do you want a Japanese beer? And I was like, yeah. I was just gonna get like a boring beer, but duh, I should get Japanese. So I got a Suntory beer, I've never had it before. Is that the one that Bill Murray like is advertising in Lost in Translation? For relaxing times. Make it Suntory time. It's good. Oh my god, I feel like my first Japanese thing of the trip. Yes. I'm, you guys, I'm sorry. If I'm like annoying, I'm sorry. I'm just very excited. Because when you said like Japanese beer, I was like, oh, yes! Why didn't I think of that? So I just put on my slippers. I've been enjoying my Japanese beer, watching season six of The Office, one of my favorite shows. This is probably the most relaxed I've ever been on a flight. And I was like, dreading the flight like I was so anxious so nervous and we've got a long way to go but I'm enjoying myself so far. We've been flying for five hours I think we're passing Alaska. We still got a ways to go. Kitra still watching The Office. How many episodes did you watch? Um at least ten. Really? Yeah. Got a lot more to go. I've mostly been here trying to plan out what we're going to be doing in Tokyo for the next few days. Spent a lot of time researching and organizing. Many hours later. So we were wondering if we were going to actually get a second meal on this flight. Because we only have like two hours left. But they came around to give us breakfast. So we got some fresh fruit here and a breakfast calzone. It's really good. I'm honestly shocked. It's kind of like a hot baga, but it's like full of cheese. I like it. If Haneda is your final destination, follow the arrival signs to immigration, baggage claim, and customs. They were like, if you have any ham or sausages, that is illegal to bring it into Japan. Good thing we don't have any ham or sausages. I guess my plan to smuggle ham sandwiches into Japan is not going to work out. cell phone but they're all like these individual stalls with like sinks and like the toilet that like sprays you and it's like so high-tech and amazing. Kitchers discovered the wonders of Japanese toilets. I just sent Peter a bunch of photos and I came out here I was like did you get my photos yet? He's like no. <laughs> that's for your rear, that's for uh, your front, there's a dryer. So that was a long plane ride but I'm glad that we had the premium select because I don't know how it'd do in a normal seat. The seats were amazing. They were so comfortable. The flight did feel very long though, but they, they kept us like full. They fed us so much, so many drinks. I'm like stuffed. And I kind of regret eating so much because like I want to eat here. And we took off at 10 a.m. LA time. We landed the next day at 2 p.m. Japan time. So we are in the future. Yeah, so it kind of sucks that we lost a day coming here, but it's cool that we're in the future, but we gain a day going back, so it evens out. Peter. Nice to see you. Welcome to Japan. So instead of taking the train to the hotel, since we have a lot of baggage, we booked the driver through Kluk. It was about 100 bucks. I've been told it's worth it because the trains can get very packed around this time. We just got to our hotel. We're staying at Hotel Gracery in Shinjuku, and it was about a 45-minute drive from the airport with traffic. And once we got closer to the hotel, the streets were getting narrow and narrower, and it, there were more bright colors and stuff. 
Oh my god, I'm just, I can't, I, I have to like pinch myself that we're here. But anyways, we made it, so let's go check out our room. So the reason why there's a Godzilla statue in our lobby and there's Godzilla merch, there's something like t-shirts and stuff, we're going to show you in a bit. We're in a cool hotel. First impressions, this is an upscale city hotel. It has like some nice decor, has a little waiting area with some books. It's a nice little cafe where you can sit down and relax and grab yourself something to eat or drink. But I will say that the first impressions don't reveal what is really going on here. We'll show you a little bit. Look at this, they have a money exchange right inside the hotel lobby. So you can exchange your US cash. I heard that like, the hotel rooms in Japan were small, but this is like bigger than I thought it was gonna be. But look at this view. Whoa. Holy crap. Wow, that is an insane view. I had no idea. That's interesting. It has two umbrellas on the back of the door. While this room is small, I think it like utilizes the space well. There's a full length mirror right over here in the hallway. And there's this little sink area over here. Excuse our bags, we have like no place to put them at the moment but I was not expecting the sink to be outside of the bathroom. So the interesting thing about Japanese showers is like the whole room is like a shower. So you could like, water goes right into the drain down there. So you could take a bath or you can use all the space. The question is, what are all these controls? I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, here's the toilet. Ooh, this is so nice, wow. Okay, we got a, a fancy Japanese toilet, of course. So I was confused at first trying to find the flusher and it turns out that it's actually on the wall over here. So let's do our first official Japanese flush test. Oh, nice and delicate. That was nice, that was like satisfying. I guess a five out of five. And then you have a little bit of closet space. Yeah, there's an ironing board, there's some slippers. There's a bunch of amenities in here. They even have like bottles of water and stuff. I like this is way nicer than like a standard hotel room in America, I'm just saying. What do they have down here? Oh, it's a coffee maker and some coffee. Wow. So if you're wondering how much a hotel like this costs, we, I think, paid through booking.com about $250 a night. There's like a bunch of buttons on the wall over here and I have no idea what they're for. I think these might be the lights. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Okay. We see you, Japan. <laughs> we see you. Yeah. Wow. This place is tiny, but I, I like it. Why am I so entertained by this? And this view, like I feel like the view alone but I feel like the coolest thing we're about to go show you, the real reason why we booked this hotel, you'll you'll see. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. So we're staying at Hotel Gracery, which has a gigantic Godzilla head sticking over the top of it. So from the ground level, it looks like Godzilla is like destroying the city, <laughs> which is really cool. And apparently, usually at every like half an hour, hour, he like, blows fire and stuff, but they're doing some kind of movie premiere downstairs. There's like a cinema in here, yeah. Toho Cinema. So they're not doing that right now because the movie premiere, there, people are doing interviews and stuff like that. But there's all sorts of statues here showcasing moments throughout Godzilla's history. <laughs> and there's even a point in the rock over here where I think you can touch Godzilla. It says something might happen if you place your hand on this opening. This is giving me like Pandora World of Avatar vibes. You're touching him. Yeah. I, I feel like I heard a roar. You hear that? Yeah. Am I doing that? This is just so awesome. I love that Japan like embraces Godzilla and is like, yeah, we're known for Godzilla and you could stay at a freaking hotel with Godzilla's head popping out of it. I feel like it's hard to get like a good photo up here. I feel like the better photo might actually be from at the bottom. Yeah. But this is like, it's so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. That's what she said. That's what she said. Ha! I don't get it. But it's it's really cool. It's really cool in person. So we went downstairs to check out the ground level and I was like looking up at the signs. 
what is that sign with the the little cats and <laughs> I don't know. Should I use my Google Translate? And it's a pet shop. I thought it was like an animal cafe. I was like, ooh, I wouldn't go meet those animals. <laughs> they have like shops where you could just buy puppies. Here, can we please go in? I just want to go in. I see a Pomeranian. I don't think the United States will let us import dogs. I don't think I'm ready to handle Japan. We've literally been here five minutes. This is the first thing we saw when we walked out of our hotel. So I'm guessing this place sells pork, chicken, and fish. <laughs> I was like looking around, looking up, and I finally found the Godzilla head poking over. It looks awesome from down here. I don't know if it's a premiere of a Godzilla movie, but the, a Godzilla just like wheeled up on a truck down this road, which I guess is called Godzilla Road. Our hotel is on Godzilla Road. I don't even know where to go. We're just like walking. I'm like, it, where are we? It is like Times Square here. It's like the J Japanese Times Square. Yeah, let's, let's walk across the street. So why not? Everyone else is doing it. So we don't have any yen and we need to get some yen. So we heard the best way to do that is to go to 7-Eleven and take some money out at the ATM. There's like so many things in here. Where do we even... I know we came here to get money out, but I want to get like something to drink and I don't know what. Wow, beer is like 142 yen? Yeah, I think that's only like a few bucks. Can you carry that around or? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are here. I just want to get like a water or something or yeah. something a little more fun than a water, but yeah. I even have Coke Zero here for you, my love, but look how small the container is compared to America. Tiny. It looks is. thin. It's small. A thin little guy. One thing I hear a lot about online is the sandwiches, like the egg sandwiches at 7 Eleven. Ooh, Look at this. this. One. The chicken. Ooh, this, fruit. We were just watching somebody's video where he was eating this. Living Bobby? Yeah. I might try that. I've heard the, I've heard the egg sandwich is the thing you get. Should we get them? And they cut off like the crust. I love that. This looks good. Oh my god, this is warm. This is all hot coffee and tea. That, that's amazing. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so I guess where the red is is the warm stuff. I think a lot of this stuff you get and then you can heat it up. But I just noticed this. This is corn and mayonnaise. You should get it. <laughs> I don't know about that. Like, do you heat this up or do you eat it cold? So I was able to use the ATM to get out some yen. It's pretty easy. So yeah, don't go to the cash conversion. Go Just go to ATM. A lot of the vending machines and the subway here take a payment called the Suka card, and you can basically just add that to your Apple wallet. So we just set that up on Kitra's phone, and she's eyeing something in the vending machine over here. Strawberry milk. Ooh, that sounds good. I'm gonna get the strawberry milk. My first vending machine drink. I have been waiting my entire life for this. I don't think you guys understand how many vending machines are right here. Like, there's literally one every 20 feet. Cheers. Oh my god, it's amazing. Does it, is it just chocolate milk? I mean, uh, strawberry strawberry milk. milk. Yeah, it's just like a sweet, kind of like like a very pink color. I don't know if you could see it. Does it have any carbonation or anything to it? This gets a five out of five. But it's like cute and little. I love it. Wait, so is this like a tomato soda? Or is it like V8? <laughs> I should have got that. No, no. Walking down these streets is just so overwhelming. There's so many lights, so many flashing things. Yeah, I feel a bit overstimulated. We like just got here, I'm jet lagged already, and it's just like there's so many noises and everything going on all around us. What I do enjoy though is a lot of the restaurants, they have photos of the food, which is very, very helpful. So you could see like what's inside for you know people like us who don't know the language. So I appreciate that. Some don't just have photos, but they actually have displays. I like that. That is so cool. Wow. I wonder if that's actual food that they've just like preserved somehow. No, it's like fake plastic food. Oh. Well, it looks good, whatever it is. So one thing that everybody told me I had to get in 7-Eleven is melon soda. Melon soda is huge here in Japan, and they had some Fanta melon. So we're going to try Oh, Fanta, Fanta, do you want to? Melon soda. Okay. Why don't they have this in the States? Is it good? Yes. It doesn't really taste like a watermelon or cantaloupe. It's a hard, it's like a candy melon kind of taste to it. Five out of five people. Ordinary adventure, sir. 
Wow, this is really good. It's 8 o'clock, which is 4 a.m. California time. We are tired. We were planning to do a lot more when we got here, but we're wiped. But don't worry, we've got plenty of more Tokyo videos coming away. This is just the beginning. Yeah, so if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. And we'll put our Tokyo playlist right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Arlene, Emily, and MK. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.